Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to both read and write CSV files in Python. So we're going to start with this input file, which is going to represent some sales data for a company that sells like electronics products. And we're going to read that file in to generate these output files. So these are files that basically show you uh, the sales volume and units sold for different areas. So by region, by the product, or by the person selling them. So I think this is a good simple example to show you how uh, CSVs work in Python and you'll see how easy it is to read and write CSVs in this video. So with all that being said, let's get into writing the code to read and write CSV files in Python. To get started, let me show you the CSV file that we'll be working with today. So the idea behind this is it's like some sales data. So we have like a region, a product, a salesperson, and then the amount that they sold in like dollars and then the number of units that they sold. So this is just an example file just so you can see everything that's working. Of course, this file could be like thousands of lines long if it needed to. It's gonna work just the same, but in this case, I only have like eight lines of data here. So with that, uh, let's create a script.py. So this is where I'm going to actually uh, run the code for everything. And to start, I'll open the file so I can read what's in it. So in Python, uh, I can call the open function and I just put in the name of the file. So CSV, input.csv. And then I can also pass in a mode. Uh, the mode in here will be read mode. Also, I can pass write mode if I want to write to a file. In this case, I just want to read it so I can pass R. And this is also the default. So if you didn't want to pass this, it would still work the same. And then I'll put as F. So what's happening here is anytime you open a file, you want to close it later. And by calling with and then calling open, um, it will close automatically once I get out of this block. So if I write code inside of this block here, meaning everything is indented inside of with, then once I get out of the block, the, the file will be closed. So once I'm out of the block, I won't be able to read from the file anymore because I would have closed it. If I didn't use this with, I'd have to close the file myself. And you can do that if it is necessary for your case, but in most cases you can just use with so the file gets closed automatically. And then F just represents the actual file contents, like the file object, and then I can read from it. So I'll start by just printing F, and then in the terminal down here, I'll run python3 script.py. And then we see here, it gives me this uh, IO text IO wrapper object. So this isn't very interesting in itself, but what I can do is I can loop over this in Python. So I can say like four line in F and then I can print the line. So let's go ahead and run the same thing, Python three script.py. And now we see uh, each line of the CSV is being printed. So the first line that has the headers is there. And then each line of the actual data is appearing here. So by looping over this file object, I am able to print like each line. That's what it does by default. So printing the object itself doesn't do much, but looping over the object actually does something. So this is fine, but this data is a little hard to work with. We have CSV data. So, you know, each thing is separated by a comma and we wanna be able to parse that easily and get the information out that we want easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import the CSV library, which is a standard library, so I don't have to install anything. And then what I'll do is instead of simply looping over F, first what I'll do is I'll create a reader out of it. So I'll assign the data to be a variable called data, and then I'll use CSV, which I just imported, and reader and I'll pass an F. And then instead of looping over F, I'll loop over data. And now let's see what happens when I do this. So now down here, instead of just getting lines of text, now I'm getting a list. So we see I have a list of five things here, the five headers, and then each row that I have in the CSV is a list of data. So North Laptop John 5010, which exactly matches the first row of data that I have here in the CSV file. So sometimes this type of data is what you need to work with because the CSV data isn't in a quite regular form. It really depends on where you get the CSV data from. But if you have a consistent format for the data in your CSV, then instead of using the regular reader, I recommend using the dictionary reader. So instead of csv.reader, you can use the dictionary reader, which is dict reader, capital D, capital R, and then just save it. And then everything will work in a similar way, but the output will be slightly different. So let me run it. 
And we see here, instead of getting lists, I get dictionaries. So the benefit of this is instead of looking for a certain position inside of a list for the data that I want. So for example, we see that the product name is the second thing in a list. Instead of looking for the second thing directly, like using like the number one inside of a, um, the square brackets, what I can do is I can look for the product key and get the product. So it's a little bit easier to work with. It's a little more clear what I'm looking for instead of just using a number. So I'm gonna use a dictionary reader instead of the regular reader for this. So now let's do something with this data. Let's say we wanted to calculate the total sales volume in this input file. Uh, so what I'll do is I will create a variable before the loop. I'll call it sales volume and I'll have that be initialized to zero. And then what I'm gonna do is inside of the loop, I'm gonna take each row's sales value and I'm going to add it to the previous sales volume. And then by doing that across the entire uh, CSV file, I'll get the total amount of sales for the entire file. So I'll comment out this print here and I'll say sales volume, I'm going to add the sales value. So remember, uh, this is going to be a dictionary, so each line is a dictionary. I'm looking for the sales key, and I'm gonna add it to the sales volume. The sales key is gonna be a string, because a CSV can only have strings. So I need to convert this to an integer first, and then I can add it to the sales volume. And then after all that's done, I'll print out the sales volume. So let me go ahead and run it again. And now we see that the sales volume, the total sales volume in the file is 30,000. 500. So that looks about right just looking at the data. Um, and it makes sense, right? I have nine things and, you know, they're around 3,000 ish on average. So it kind of makes sense that uh, 30,500 was the sales volume. So what if I wanted to do something more uh, complicated? So instead of looking at the total sales volume, I wanted to look at the sales volume uh, per like region and per product. So let's start with region since that's the first thing. So what I'll do is I'll create a dictionary at the top and I'll call it region sales. And the idea is the key for this will be every region that I have. So in this particular file, I only have two regions, north and south, but of course I can have like east and west and southeast and so on, whatever makes sense for the data that I have. And then inside of the loop, what I can do is uh, to make this a little bit easier, I'll extract out the name of the region. So we'll do line uh, region. And then I'll also extract out the sales information. So line sales, and how about the number of units sold as well? So I can add both the sales volume and the number of units for that region. So uh, this will be line units. And then what I wanna do is I'll comment out the sales volume. Let's just remove that. And then what I want to do is I first want to check to make sure that um, region exists in the dictionary here, region sales. If that particular region doesn't exist, I need to go ahead and create it and initialize it to be zero for both the sales volume and the number of units sold. So I'll say something like this. If region, which is this variable here, so if this region uh, does not exist in region sales, then I wanna add it. I wanna say region sales, and then the name of the region, and I'm going to initialize it to have a dictionary of, let's say, sales volume, which will start off as zero, and units. Let's say total units. And that also starts off at zero. That way we don't get an error when we try to add to something that doesn't exist. So the very first time it encounters a region, it will add it to the region sales dictionary and set the sales volume and total units to zero. And then after that, what I can do is I can then uh, add on to the sales volume and the total units in the same way that I did here. So I can say region sales and then the name of the region that I'm interested in. So the current region for that particular line and then I want to modify the sales volume first. And then I can just do plus equals and then the sales. So what I'll do is I'll make this an integer up here. So int sales and then also int units. And then now this region sales dictionary will have the sales volume for that particular region, or at least it will update it in the iteration of the loop. And of course, after the loop has finished, 
uh, everything should be updated. And I'll do the same thing for the units. So region sales, uh, region, and then we'll do total units here. And we're going to increase it by the number of units in the iteration of the loop, right? So once we do that and we finish everything, we can print out the region sales here the entire dictionary. So let me go ahead and run the script again. And now we see this dictionary. We see north, so north is the key. And we see the sales volume for the north is 15,300 and the total units is 28. And then we look at south, we see the sales volume is 15,200 and the total units is 31. And we see that the sales volume adds up to 30,500 because we're just breaking it out by a uh, region this time, but it still should add up to the same thing. So what we can do is we can do the same thing for like the uh, salesperson and the product. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's uh, pull out the salesperson here as a variable. So salesperson equals line and then salesperson, and then also the product. So product equals line, and then product. And we can do the exact same code. It's the exact same process. We can say if product in, or product not in, product sales, and I need to create this dictionary. So let me go ahead and create up here. So we have product sales, and we also have uh, salesperson sales, just to keep the names consistent. So if product is not in product sales, then we need to initialize it. So we'll say product sales, uh, the name of the product, and then we initialize the dictionary. I can just copy this one here. And then I'll also do the same thing for the salesperson. So if salesperson not in salesperson sales, then we have sales person sales needs to be initialized to the same thing. So let's initialize everything in the same spot so it visually is consistent. And then we'll do the same thing here for each one. So what I'll do is I'll change this to be product sales. And then this will be the product, the key here. And then the same thing will happen for the salesperson sales. Right, so salesperson sales is a dictionary use here, and then the actual salesperson, and then we're still increasing it by the sales and the units. And notice that we're doing this all in one iteration of the loop because we're getting the totals for each type. Um, so there's gonna be overlap, but all three things are gonna be independent. We're grouping by a different thing for each one, and you'll see that when we print them out here. So we print, salesperson sales, and then we'll print uh, product sales here. And now we'll run it. And uh, we see an error here, so I probably misspelled something or forgot to put something somewhere. So it's claiming that John is not in the dictionary, and that's simply because I forgot the square brackets here. So this should be salesperson here, and now, and now this should work. So now we see the first one is still for the region, the second one is by product, so laptop, phone, tablet, and then finally the last one is by the salesperson. So we have John, Sarah, and Mike. And these values continue to add up to 30,500 for each one because like I said, they're they're independent in a sense. Like the, the volume for the salespeople is going to be a different idea than the volume for the product. So we can't add up those values across because they're basically using the same data, but they're just different ideas. And because they're different ideas, we're gonna create three different output files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a folder here called reports, and I'm gonna put the output files in there. So let me go ahead and comment these out. And what I'll do here is I'll start by creating the region sales report, and it's gonna be the same for the product sales and the salesperson sales. So um, we're gonna open up a new file, and it's gonna be in reports, and we're gonna call this region sales.csv. And like I said before, the second argument to open is going to be the mode that you open in. So in this case, we wanna to open to write, so we need to put W instead of R here. So we wanna to open to write to the file, and then we'll do ask F again, so we have access to the file object. So here I need to create a writer. So I'll create writer here, and then I'll do csv.writer and pass an F. So this is 
similar idea to the reader like that. For the reader, I'm reading the data, obviously, and the writer, I'm going to be writing data. There's actually a dictionary writer as well, and it works well when you have like a simple dictionary. But in our case, we have like a dictionary of dictionaries. So I'm going to control the output more directly myself. So I'm just going to use the regular writer. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write the header row for this region sales report. So what I can do is I can do writer dot write row and this will take in a list and this list will end up being the header for the CSV file. So I want the name of the region as the first thing in the header and then let's say sales volume as the second thing and then units sold as the third thing, right? So that's the header. That's the first thing to be written. And then I want to put the actual data. So what I can do is I can say for region and data in region sales dot items. So this is taking the dictionary items. It's putting the key and one thing here region and the actual value that other dictionary inside of data. So then I'll do writer dot write row. And I'm going to start by writing the region. So that's the first thing. And then I want the sales volume. So that's going to be data and then sales volume here, getting it from the data dictionary. And then finally, data and then total units. And that's it. So let's go ahead and run this. Let's look in the reports directory. We have this new file called region sales.csv. And we see we have region sales volume units sold as the header. And then we have two rows because we have two regions. So north and south. And we see these two still add up to 30,500. And then we have the number of units sold for each region. So if I wanted to do the exact same thing for the product and the salespeople, uh, I can just change this to uh, product sales. And this will be, uh, let's say, person sales. And then this first part of the header will be the name of the product here. Here it's going to be salesperson. And then I just need to change what I'm looping over. So I'm going to loop over product sales here. And I'm going to loop over uh, salesperson sales here. So I'll run the script. And now we have three files in the output. Region sales is still the same. Product sales, we see laptop, phone, and tablet, and the volume and units for that. And then we have person sales. We have John, Sarah, Mike and we see the data. So this is the same data that we saw when we were printing it out, but uh, now it's in a CSV instead of just a dictionary. So this could have been written in many different ways. Uh, the approach that I took here isn't the most concise way of doing something like this, but I think it's the most clear and it's the best for a video like this. So if you wanna modify this to make the code a little uh, shorter uh, because there's so much repetition, you can definitely do something like that. But my goal for this video was to show you how to both read and write CSV files in Python. So I hope I was able to help you with that. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about anything that I've done here, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.